That's what I was thinking to myself while you were talking about earlier on in your life, um, because what you were drawn to, like James Taylor and folk singers, really, um, isn't what you wanted to sing, and what they made you sing to begin your lessons wasn't either one of those things. So, uh, I mean, I, I think it's good. It's it's good to have many influences and, and kind of peruse all the different styles before you settle in on one yourself, especially starting so young, because you're still trying to find your voice, your vocal yeah. range and things like that. Um, and honestly, uh, when we first started talking, I was expecting to find out that with the diverse, the cultural diversity in your family, I was expecting to find out that that had a major influence to, to one end of the spectrum or the other. Um, Latin or, or uh, Sicilian, but uh, if you Just remained untouched wait, yeah. through all of that. Um, I, growing up, there wasn't much like Spanish music in the house. I know, uh, like, uh, I've listened to some of the stuff that my grandparents listened to, like the old, uh, the older, uh, my grandparents, my dad's parents, both my mom's parents passed away. Uh, my granny, I think, was 94 when she passed away. Um, and that was. 11 years ago mm -hmm. um, my dad's parents have been married for almost 70 years um, they're both in their 90s now mm -hmm. and uh, it's like some of the most vibrant people I've ever met so I've, I've, I've grown up listening to some of their stuff but like in our house um, there was such a big culture difference between my mom and my dad that I remember my dad trying to teach me Spanish when I was little and I got so frustrated and because there weren't two Spanish speaking parents in the house I learned some but I didn't learn like I can understand what people are talking about, right? But um, I'm not I'm not fluent in it. So there was my, my dad came here when he was little, um, and um, there was a lot of immersion into you know the American culture. Um, my grandparents made sure that they you know that they held on to their roots, but it was you know there was a lot of gratitude. My grandfather came here before my grandmother and my and my dad, and. Um, you know, it took him, you know, a couple of years to get things built up here before he could even send for them. Did you sense that they were anxious to kind of fly under the radar as far as where they came from originally? Uh, I, I, what, 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 what was the genesis, I guess, for the disappearance of the culture over time? I, I it's so it's assimilating into where you are and fitting in and especially that's back in the 50s yeah you know you want you know and i can't speak for them because you know i can only you know imagine or you know surmise but um like our last name is guy but um it's it's cali right. that's the you know i guess the american way of, of saying our last name and it you know that's they, they adapted uh, my grandfather came here he worked they were both pharmacists in Ecuador. When they came here, their degrees didn't transfer over. Right. So they had to start all over. My grandfather worked three jobs and went to school at night and got, you know, became a pharmacist. He worked for K&B, nice. um, I think for close to 40 years. Um, and like more than culture, more than music, he taught us the value of hard work and determination and all of those things that that kind of he taught us more than culture he taught us education uh -huh. and how important that is but not just how important that is but how fortunate we are to have that opportunity so that was that was the most present thing i think growing up uh -huh. with my dad was no 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 you need to you know you need to be grateful for the opportunity to have an education, so you need to work the best that you can, um, because not everybody has uh, is so lucky right. to have the opportunity. That was that was the that was kind of um, one of our main, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Mantra, I guess. Yeah, it was it was just uh, kind of one of our core values in our homes growing up was education is a privilege. Yeah. Um, and if you want something, it's not that it's unattainable. Mm -hmm. You're just gonna have to work really hard for it. Um, and you know, my dad ended up, you know, my, my grandparents, you know, instilled that in, in my my dad and my aunt, his sister, and she ended up being uh, a doctor. She's one wow. of the, she's a phenomenal, she's one of the smartest people I know. 
um, and my dad ended up um, being really successful in his career as well. Mm -hmm. And he, you know, uh, they kind of imparted that on us kids. My aunt had two kids and my mom and dad had two kids. And it's just whatever it is that you want. Mm -hmm. Like they've never to, oh, well, no, you need to do this or this. My grandparents, as, as strict and as hard as they are when it comes to great, you know, school and education, they're probably my, my abuelita, my grandmother, is probably one of my biggest champions as far as music. Mm -hmm. And then my mom's mom, um, you know, you see these old school, you know, these old school values. But they were both my grandmothers were so um, like they were my cheerleading section. Still are yeah. when it comes to music. It's what do you need? You're, fin you know, like what can I do to help you? Like they're just still so supportive. Yeah. So you can see that that when it came to their kids, when it comes to their grandkids, it was um, how can we help you feel flourish? How can we help you be successful? Yeah. And then that passed on to my parents. My parents are like they they're right there in in that cheering section. They're, sure. Hey, we're so proud of you. There's never Did been that one surprise moment. you though because they were going the professional route. You mm -hmm. wouldn't think that they would be elated. Um, some people's parents don't appreciate the idea that they want to go mm -hmm. be in a band as opposed to being a CPA. You know, and we're talking about two different two completely paths in yep. life. You know? um, when I was younger, I took it for granted a lot I was just like oh well these are how my parents are like they would come to every practice every performance yeah uh, they were they were right that what do you you know it wasn't until I was older that I realized how rare and how lucky I am to have the parents that I have gotcha um my dad's my best friend yeah uh my mom has the biggest heart and she would do anything for for anybody that's great and it you know I'm, I live in this little bubble and it mm -hmm. wasn't until I was an adult that I realized not everybody has a family like that. Sure. And um, But I mean, I, as a result, there was no getting you out of this <laughs> once it started. <laughs> um, it wasn't. I, I got in my own way. I got in my own way when um, when I was younger. I was a mom very young. Mm -hmm. um, I, uh, I was a mom at 16. And uh, everything stopped at that point. It was, you're a mom now. Right. Go to college, get a job. And it wasn't until I was in my 30s that I really, like right before I was in my 30s, I was in a not so great situation. Um, and I just, I had buried myself in complacency and just what you're supposed to do. And oh, right. you're supposed to work this job and do this and do this, that I realized like, I'm not enjoying my life. Yeah. And if my kids don't see me happy, you know, I realize how often do I really smile? And that I'm a role model to my kids. And if I want to be the role model that my parents are for me, then how can I say that if I'm not following my dreams and what drives me? Yeah. And um, I ended up getting back into music when I was right about 29, 30. How long of a break was that for you? A long time. Um, almost 10 years okay. in between there um I, I did audition for the voice and made it to the second round I remember my dad drove me all night to atlanta georgia <laughs> it was like a hey we're doing this yeah. you want to do it cool let's get in the car let's go and um we spent the weekend out there i ended up making it to the second round i was sick before we left and i was sick with nerves or no like sick. i had a cold oh okay i had a bad cold and um it's something that I've struggled with ever since then because I'm stubborn and when you're in your 20s you think you're invincible sure and so oh well, I'll power through it and ended up uh, doing the audition ended up blowing my voice out oh. uh, I went to the to the voice uh, to the vocal doctor um, not long ago and they said I have vocal scarring on my right vocal cord um, and they're like I don't know when I was like I know exactly when it happened because after that, I wasn't able to sing for about a year or two. Sure. And after that, I just kind of, like, I, I had no, like, I, I could not get, couldn't, I, I had no, no voice anymore. Um, I would get hoarse when I would barely speak. Um, I thought, okay, well, let's just let it, sit, you know, you'll be, I couldn't sing for a really long time. And uh, it was devastating. So I buried sure. my head in life and tried to put it behind me. And a lot of depression came from that. 
Um, and then not just from that, just life. It's, I ended up gaining a lot of weight. Um, I, uh, I've lost about 160 pounds. Wow. Um, when I was younger, I used to just be small. I always took that for granted. That, yeah. You know, and um, after I had kids, I, you know, not taking care of myself. You know, not paying attention, just working and... Well, like you said, you don't realize it. You don't realize it. comes it on slowly. Until somebody shows me a picture from, from an office party and they're like, oh, here. And I'm like, who's that? And they're like, that's you. And I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> and I ended up weighing about over 300 pounds before I realized... Wow. Oh, wait. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't until um, I stopped working that job, started working as a bartender, as a, as a waitress and was forced to walk, to Be on move, your feet constantly. then I started losing weight, realized, oh, hey, this feels better, let's sure. keep on that track, and I ended up um, losing about 40 pounds, and then um, it was one of my best friends, she was getting married, she started a diet, and I started doing it with her, lost about 90 pounds in a year, wow. and it was like, that's when I started finding myself again, sure. started getting that confidence back, I'd been in um, uh, some abusive relationships, and had lost my voice in more than one way, um, you know, and like I said, when I was younger, I never listened to anyone when they said, you know, oh, well, you shouldn't, you know, oh, you're, you know, or people's reactions. It was just, no, I want to sing. When I got older, you know, you lose that magic when you were little, when the whole world is completely possible. There's a lot more to consider. There's a, you're more naive as a child, so it's easier to be stubborn, like you said. Or but when you get in a relationship, you give your heart to someone and that person tells you. Yeah. Hey, you, you don't might sing well. Take it as the word. Yeah. It was you look stupid when you sing. You're terrible at it. Wow. You need to stop. Yeah. You have no business doing this. Um, that I let people like that steal my voice. Mm -hmm. That on top of then damaging my voice later on, it was just like okay, well I guess this just isn't meant for me. And that caused a ten year break, you said. Yeah, between that and, and, and damaging my voice, about sure. about a 10 year. I started getting a, a few years in, I started doing like some karaoke, you know. How long was that after the voice competition? Uh, about two years um, after, so around 2013. Mm -hmm. um, so were you testing it out along the way? Yes, or anything? yes, I would do karaoke did? sometimes. Okay. But like we'd go out with friends. And um, it was, oh, hey, so I would get up there and I could do one or two songs and then my voice would give out. Oh. And it was just a, okay, cool, this is just a fun little party trick now. You know, I, I had done all these vocal lessons when I was younger. I had definitely expanded my range. And um, I mean, I could, for one or two songs, I, I could, you know, belt Whitney Houston. I could, you know, hit some Mariah Carey notes, you know, okay. I, but then because I didn't take care of my voice because after I damaged it, I didn't go back to square one with vocal lessons and yeah. trying to take care of it again. I just kind of, you know, um, I would do one or two songs and I'd be spent. Yeah. Um, but then um, I, uh, when I lost all that weight, I started gaining more confidence in myself, started kind of, okay, well, let's do this a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, and then I got into a, a relationship that I thought it would be really great. You know, what you're supposed to do. Domesticity is, you know, when you get almost into your 30s, this is where you're supposed to be, right? This yeah. is, you know, you're supposed to have this stable home and, uh, you know, this um, family unit for your kids. For And I thought, okay, well, this is where I'm supposed to be. Um, Happily ever afters aren't fairy tales. Sure. Um, so you kind of settle for what's the least crappy option. Right. And you convince yourself that you're happy even when you're not. Yeah. And that's how you fall into abusive relationships. It's without realizing how do you boil a frog? Yeah. You know? Slowly over Slowly time. Slowly over yeah. time. And then all of a sudden you realize, oh crap, and then you can't get out. Yeah. And that's what ended up happening. Um, and I just felt like I was drowning all the way around. And I was doing karaoke, and um, some of my friends came up to me and said, "Hey, look, you have a good voice. Thinking about starting a band? Do you want to join?" I didn't think about it. I was like, "Yep, yeah, sure." Because <laughs> um, I started, you know, getting a little bit stronger, a little bit stronger with my voice. Just yeah, you know. I would think that it'd be a, a. You probably did the best thing unknowingly by kind of taking it one little step at a time. You know, yeah. it gave myself the rest that I needed. Um, 
but what I should have done is the second I wanted to get back into it was go back to the basics and go back into vocal lessons, which is actually yeah. where I'm at right now because I still have problems with my voice, um, getting exhausted and tired out uh -huh. way too easily. And um, uh, speaking with a, with a, a voice doctor, she's like, you know what, it's not really your singing voice. She goes, it's your speaking voice. Hmm. You need to learn. And I'm like, but I talk all the time. I'm, I'm an expert at that. She's like, no, you need to, like your tonality and where. She's like, do you get tired when you talk? I'm like, yeah. She's like, I've never thought I'd have someone tell me that, you know, when it comes to speaking, that I need to learn how to do it better. <laughs> right. Especially now where you came from, where you grew up, right? Yeah.